Welcome to another video. Here's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to talk about the advanced multi-row queue sequence. I know it's a long and sort of overly complicated name, but it's actually pretty simple to use. And the idea here is that we have a lot of people who have the need, let's say, to execute uh, a sequence of actions across multiple different target computers. Uh, maybe you have like 10 different servers that are part of a particular infrastructure for one of your environments and those servers have offline and online dependencies such that they have to be rebooted in a certain order um, or uh, you know if you're doing Windows updates maintenance you can't just update all of them, shut them all down and bring them back up. You have to uh, update a, a few of them reboot those, then you have to update a few more and reboot those, and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what the advanced multi-row queue sequence allows you to do is it gives you the ability to execute a, a, a queue, uh, so basically multiple tasks across multiple hosts and have all of those hosts be linked together into one big sequence that can be customized in any which way you want. So let me show you an example to make it more clear. And we're going to keep it as simple as possible, but right now I've just added a bunch of, these are bogus hosts, they don't actually exist, just for the sake of this example I thought it would be easier to look at it like this. Uh, but let's just say that hosts 1, 2, and 3 need to perform a series of actions and then reboot, and then hosts 4, 5, and 6 need to perform a series of actions, and then hosts 7, 8, 9 need to perform a series of actions, and you know they have to go in that particular order. So you can't start 4, 5, and 6 until all of 1, 2, and 3 are done, and you can't start 7, 8, and 9 until all of 4, 5, and 6 are done. So the way that we set this up is basically we apply a job queue. This is a standard batch batch job queue. To we're going to apply a job queue to 1, 2, and 3 in this case. Let's just say our job queue, maybe, again, for the sake of this example, we just want them to wait a minute. Um, but you might have them reboot, check for updates, do whatever you want. Uh, they don't have to be the same 1, 2, and 3. They can all be different. But again, in this case, for the sake of this example, we'll set them all to just wait one minute. And we're going to apply that queue to the row. So each of these just has a very simple job queue in it of waiting one minute. Then we come to, let's say, 4, 5, and 6, and we need to apply a job queue there. Well, again, let's, for the sake of this example, we'll just apply a one-minute uh, wait, and we can do the same for 7, 8, 9. So <clears throat> we can pretend that we've given custom queues to each of these machines because, you know, maybe you have to run a special script and then you got to reboot it and you want to apply updates and run another special script. Whatever it is, you can do any of that for each host and then you can link them all together. So here's how it goes. We go actions, job queue, and we say create, modify, advanced, multi-row queue sequence. Okay, so for, again, the sake of this example, we're going to give a sequence name. I'll just call it my sequence. And here's how it works. So we have this set po sequence position number. I'm going to put the number one in here, and I'm going to apply number one to our hosts, one, two, and three. And I'll just apply that, okay? So now what we see here is my sequence one, I'm going to apply position number two to these next set, okay, and I'm going to apply position number three here. So what this means with our 111, 222, and 333 is when we execute this sequence, which we'll do in a minute, it's going to execute everything that's in position number one, which are these three hosts, it's going to execute those at the same time and it's going to wait until all three of these complete. Only when all three of these are complete will it then go on to execute the next set. And only when all these in position two are complete will it execute what's in position three. Okay. So the way that we handle execution for this uh, multi-row queue sequence is we actually create a special execution row, which is what this, this zero row. It's just a blank row. Um, you don't actually have to have a host in here. It's just uh, essentially just holding the position, I'm going to click on this Create Sequence Execution while Radio button, and we'll apply that. And now we can close this. So here is our sequence. The sequence is called My Sequence, and this is our order 111, 222, and 333. If I created another sequence in this same grid, but I gave it a different name, uh, that's how it would be differentiated. Anything, if I created more rows here and I used the same name, My Sequence, 
well, then those additional rows will be included in this same sequence. So the way that we're going to execute this now is uh, we will select our execution row, which is this bottom row, and we'll go back to actions, job queue, and we'll choose execute advanced multi-row queue sequence. And you can read the little information window there and then click OK. And here's what we see. Our position number one are all executing. It happens that in this case we're essentially just waiting a minute for each of these, but we'll wait for that minute to finish out. When that minute runs out, what's going to happen is position number two will all begin. It's only after all three of these have been deemed as completed that position number two will begin and so on until position number two completes. When all of position number two rows are completed, we move on to position number three, at which point the, the sequence will be over. So you can imagine uh, a lot of different ways that you might use this. One of my personal favorites is in the case of virtual machine hosts with lots of physical, excuse me, with lots of virtual guests on those physical hosts. So for example, if you have um, if you have a virtual machine, let's just say it's a Hyper-V machine. Well, actually, let me pause that for one second. Note here, we finished execution on these first three, and now execution begins on the next three. Anyway, back to my example about virtual machines. So, in the case of virtual machines, um, you know, you have a host machine, and then you have a bunch of guest virtual machines that live on that host. You could do something similar where you could create a sequence. In fact, I'll come to a new window for a second. You could create a sequence where you have like a virtual host and guest one, guest two, and guest three. And you could get virtual, you could have guest one, two, and three execute in position number one of the sequence, let's say to apply Windows updates. Then you could have it apply Windows updates to the host and then you could have it reboot all of them or something along those lines. Let me switch back here to see where we're at. Okay, so we're almost done. These are going to execute until they're complete. Oh, they just finished and now within the next few seconds when batch batch determines that they've all completed, boom, the next three go. And that's what you end up with uh, this advanced multi row queue sequence. So uh, again, it can be very powerful, whether it's for a virtual machine sequence, um, reboots, or uh, any kind of custom infrastructure that you have where multiple servers are involved and dependent on one another, uh, such that they can only be uh, offline or online in a certain sequence. Um, and this enables you to do that. We'll wait one more minute for this to finish. So the final three finished, and we get a completed notification in our execution row. And that's it. It's really uh, not too complicated.